The iPhone 5S was released on September 20th, 2013. It was the first iPhone to receive Touch ID as well as 64-bit architecture. It was also the first iPhone natively run the new flat-looking iOS 7. This phone was another turning point in the iPhone history as well as a turning point in software for Apple. Today, we are going to be looking at this iPhone 5S running iOS 7.1.2. Again, I got this iPhone on eBay last week for a total of 52 US dollars. As you see me unpack this phone, it is a space gray iPhone, unlike my iPhone 5's slate black color. And when we boot it up, we can see that it is running iOS 7. I'll let you hear my reaction of booting it up for the first time. Bro. Whoa. Look at that. Now you may have remembered a couple weeks ago when I bought an iPhone 5S that appeared to be running iOS 7 on the eBay listing. When I got it out and booted it up, it was running iOS 12. So this is my second iPhone 5S to go in my collection. Looking at this phone, you can see that it looks a lot like the iPhone 5. However, there is a slight color change because Apple saw the color on the iPhone 5 slate black models rubbing off over time with hardcore usage without a case. You can also see that the flash has two LEDs rather than just one, as well as the two glass bars on the top and bottom. Going to the camera, Apple said in their keynote that the rear camera was unable to make their photos better when using it in low light conditions. You may know of some old film photos in your drawer over there where low light photos didn't look so good. Maybe one of you when you were a kid playing in the living room. So Apple claimed that that would fix the problem, although the iPhone 4S and 5 also had great cameras as well. And they did, but you still have to know how to use a flash on a camera correctly, even I don't know how to use one correctly yet. You can also see that the iPhone SE doesn't have the FCC labels as you can see here with my iPhone SE. The 5S did not have the new Touch ID sensor on the home button, which was a whole lot nicer not only for security but also for convenience. You also had a new color, which was gold. Now I don't have a gold iPhone 5S or SE with me, so you can look at this nice photo of one here. Another little thing, the word iPhone on the back of the phone has a little bit of a lighter font than the word iPhone on the iPhone 5. I think this is doing with their new flat iOS software that did have lighter fonts in it. The iPhone 5S was the first iPhone to receive a 64-bit architecture chipset as well as the OS. The A7 chip was released on the 5S, the iPad Air, the iPad Mini 2, and the iPad Mini 3. If you don't know, the iPhone 5C was only released with the A6 chip. There is still only 1GB of RAM on the 5S, but it was tremendous to go from 512MB to 1GB on the iPhone 5 anyway. The battery was increased to 1560mAh from the previous 1440mAh that the iPhone 5 had. The camera was kept the same with 8MP on the rear and 1.2MP on the front, although the f-stop on the rear of the 5S was widened to 2, f2.2 from the previous f2.4 on the iPhone 5. The only difference that the iPhone 5S had with cameras other than the sheer f-stop improvement is that you can film in 1080p at 30 frames per second, record in slow-mo at 120 frames per second, and take burst photos. There are many things that the iPhone 5S introduced alongside the new iOS 7. Apple introduced AirDrop, which you can use to send files and photos back and forth with other people that have an A7 chipset device as well as Macs that were made in 2013 or newer. Now some sources say that the iPod Touch 5 could also use AirDrop, but I don't know on that one. I know the iPhone 5 can use AirDrop and maybe the 2012 MacBook Pro, but you'll have to double check with me on that one. There was also the iTunes radio that came with iOS 7, which was eventually turned into Apple Music in 2015. Apple also removed CoverFlow that was an iconic feature in iOS back then, pre-iOS 7. In iOS 7, you can turn your phone sideways, but it was just displays different specific albums, arts that you can tap on, but it wasn't as cool or as nostalgic as CoverFlow. I could go more into iOS 7, but I am just covering the features that worked with the iPhone 5S running iOS 7, so talking more about the iPhone 7 can be another topic for another time. The iPhone 5S sold well, outselling the iPhone 5C, the Samsung Galaxy S4, and the Samsung Galaxy S5. The Touch ID did impact everyone's life, and we complain if we don't have a nice, secure way of getting into our phone. It changed the way we unlock our phones. Unless if you don't use the feature, which I highly recommend using the feature because it's more than just a password. It's more secure. I have only had one other person that was able to unlock my iPhone with their thumbprint, but I think it was just a coincidence. It is one in a million, though. 
The iPhone 5S was supported up to iOS 12.4.5, which Apple released last month. However, they technically killed it off in September of last year when iOS 13 came out. That is six years of software support, which is just as long as the iPad 2 being supported from iOS 4 to iOS 9. The iPhone 6 though was quote unquote cut off short a year, but not really. Apple could have stopped the iPhone 5S from supporting iOS 12 if they weren't in the whole battery throttling jig at the time. Now let's finish by talking about my iPhone 5S that I have. It is a space gray color and is running iOS 7.1.2. I made sure that the iPhone 5S was running iOS 7 by contacting the seller before I purchased it. He was really nice to me and assured me that it wouldn't get updated in the pre-shipping process. He also made sure that he placed many photos of the phone to be sure that it is not just some phone from a bucket and he's secretly pulling it out from random. He said that it was and has a clean IMEI ESN and showed that there was no iCloud on it. Find my iPhone was also turned off and it it was ready to go to whoever wanted it. As soon as I got the phone, I did give him a 5 star review. Looking at the phone, there seems to be just one or two very minor scratches and nicks on it, which is typical. The iPhone was manufactured on February 25th, 2014. The latest version of iOS at the time this phone was built was iOS 7.0.6. The iPhone was purchased on March 30th, 2014 and the iOS version that was the latest then was iOS 7.1. So this phone from the factory end was updated only three times. From the user end of the phone, the software was only updated twice. Like I've said before, I still don't know how people come to buy a brand new iPhone and only use it for a few months. Now I assume that this person may have used this phone at a minimum of about five months, and I can believe that because of the cosmetic wear that it has on it. But this iPhone was $200, but you know the iPhone 6 was the top selling iPhone of all time, so you could assume why this guy updated from his 5S. I do love my 5S running iOS 7. It now joins my other devices running their native version of iOS, including my iPhone 3G running iPhone OS 2, my iPhone 4 running iOS 4, my iPhone 5 running iOS 6, as well as my iPod Touch 5th generation running iOS 6 as well. What do you think about the iPhone 5S? Were you amazed by the new Touch ID and new color? Do you own one or still use one by chance? Leave it down in the comments. If you like this video, definitely like and consider subscribing. It will help me create more videos for you guys in the future. Also, follow me on Instagram at alumnitech47 if you haven't already. Yeah, I know. That's what it's called. I'm aware of the word alumni, but now you know how to pronounce my channel name. But it works, right? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.